Hey guys, welcome to Precious Medledge. I hope you all are doing good and have watched my previous videos. If not, what are you waiting for? Go for those after the end of this video. Now, without wasting any time further, let's get into today's topic. So today I'm going to discuss mitral valve prolapse. Okay, so mitral valve prolapse is also known as Barlow syndrome. It is an abnormal systolic valve movement of one or both the mitral valve leaflets okay towards the left atrium beyond the annular plane so this is the annular plane suppose so the mitral valve leaflets will go beyond the annular plane and bulge into the left atrium as you can see here so mitral valve leaflets bulge into the left atrium during the ventricular system you can clearly see that in the picture so here you can see on the right side there is a prolapse mitral valve that is mitral valve prolapse and on the other side there is a normal mitral valve which is closed during the ventricular system. Now mitral valve prolapse is more common in females. It is associated with congenital heart diseases like atrial septal defect. Coming to the etiology of mitral valve prolapse. First is diffuse myxomatous degeneration of the mitral valve then primary flail mitral valve leaflets and sometimes mitral valve prolapse is commonly associated with Marfan syndrome. Okay. Now coming to the clinical features. First is symptoms. So patient can be asymptomatic or if the patient is symptomatic then patient will be having atypical chest pain which is of stabbing type. Palpitations can be there due to ventricular tachycardia and patient will also have syncope and fatigue. These are due to reduced cardiac output. In mitral valve prolapse. Now coming to the signs, abnormalities of chest wall and thoracic spine like scoliosis which is seen in Marfan syndrome can be present. Then mid or late systolic clicks and mid systolic apical murmur. So these two are the auscultatory findings in mitral valve prolapse. Now coming to the investigations, first is electrocardiogram which usually shows non-specific STT changes. And echocardiography is done to confirm the diagnosis of mitral valve prolapse. Now coming to the complications of mitral valve prolapse. First one is arrhythmias. Then we have infective endocarditis and progressive mitral regurgitation. So this is the most important one. Then coming to the management of mitral valve prolapse. First is reassurance of the asymptomatic patients. Then we give beta blockers for atypical chest pain. Antiarrhythmics are given for controlling the arrhythmias and mitral valve repair or mitral valve replacement is done in case of severe mitral regurgitation which has occurred due to mitral valve prolapse. So this was about mitral valve prolapse. I hope you liked the video. If you like the video, please do like, share, subscribe, comment and also press the bell icon so as to get notified whenever I upload a new video. And you can also click on the playlist shown on the right side of the screen to look for other mitral valve disorders. Thank you guys.